Right, thank you. Wow. Well, um, yeah, the timing. Um, there was... A, oh, there it is. All right. Thank you. It was a great presentation, and uh, it made me think that perhaps I should have taken a completely different presentation myself. But anyway, now I've got to stick with it. And I have to say that when I uh, read about the, the, the topics... Uh, and the title of this uh, event, I, uh, I was pretty happy because it didn't sound at all new to me. I mean, especially not in my family. And to be honest, I've done my workers, homeworks, I mean, to be honest. Um, I, had, I had had in, in my heart for many years this dilemma of how to teach my kids to say no, which is obviously uh, a kind of paradox, no? because it obviously is the, the paradox of these two opposites, teach and by learning you have to have a sort of discipline, but to say no obviously it means to dissent. And eventually I can confess it was my wife who resolved it all when I shared my preoccupation with her and she said simply, Paolo, please don't. They already mastered this art of saying no, it, which opened my, my, my eyes, actually. But still, uh, you know, when my seven years old kid looks at me my, in my eyes and confronting me as a little bastard as he is and tells me, no, I'm not going to bed, and he begins to argument for that. Uh, um, I mean, uh, it's, it's a pretty annoying thing, but also I am also very proud. Uh, and so it's not easy, but still, I think that's why I, I felt this uh, notion of dissent and discipline was kind of familiar to me. Uh, and I try to connect it, of course, to, to my practice. And, and this is where I live and work in Italy since the uh, year 2000, and uh, it, it is, um, it's a foundation uh, stemmed and created by Michelangelo Pistoletto, who is an artist uh, already active in the 50s, and still very active, and it is entirely devoted to exploring, producing, reflecting on art and uh, social change. And in uh, in year 2000, uh, we 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 had an exhibition. It was curated by Dagmar Reichert. 2002, excuse me. Uh, and uh, its title was "Critique is not enough." Its its bottom claim was uh, another title was "New Agora," and it, it was presenting the works and the practices of art collectives like Itoi or Wokken Klausur and and others already very active and interesting practices. Um, what then did we mean by saying that that was not enough? What, what else was possibly then enough? Uh, I think we've seen this morning, actually, some of the practices already I knew of. Uh, others I uh, came to realize and know, to know about this morning and afternoon that are definitely inspiring possible answers. Step in, do, implement practices in the magmatic, elusive soil that reality is. Get involved in negotiations and collaborations, locate in space and time. I mean, all of these are part of an answer, of, or, of possible answers. At the time, uh, we were uh, already quite aware that it made little sense to claim uh, by criticizing them that the bad guys would change. And then another part of the issue was that the role of the critic may sometimes be convenient and a way to find a place and sometimes an income in your practice. Then capitalism, we know well, likes criticism. It makes exhibitions of it. It is its pride. 
and sometimes flag, as we can currently see in Venice. It was also mentioned this morning. This ap only apparent paradox of self-criticism. Generally, I think in all, all honesty, it's full of pain and passion. I'm not saying anything in, in regard to that. It exposes some of the narratives and on the forms taken on by this uh, wide, phantasmagoric, continuous predation that every moment takes place on our planet, not only between different species, but to a good deal within our own species, as Renzo and others this morning reminded, in case we forgot. The system that carries this predation out in an organized way the deeper and probably even more honest the criticism is against it, the stronger it becomes. Such criticism it uses in its ways to neutralize and normalize. It's like in so-called soft techniques of martial arts, jiu-jitsu in particular, where the strength of the, of the opponent becomes a weapon to master with skill especially effective when your opponent is emotionally stressed, physically injured, intellectually little lucid, and in need of food. Well, but what does it mean to move from criticism to practice, apart from the nice slogan? Do we really ask young artists, activists, social project managers, and, and the like, to act like improvised practitioners in areas of action such as urban cohabitation, the distribution of resources, conflict management, migration management, labor inequalities. It always strikes me to our knowledge that, for if you think of it, for tasks such as the management of the logistics of containers from one part of the ocean to the other, brilliant managers get recruited after years of study and often after years of working practice and experience. I don't want to say that moving containers is completely a dumb and silly activity, but tackling issues as the ones that I just mentioned and some previous speakers have thoroughly made the case for is way, way much more complex. Organizing is made of thousands of details and someone this morning also mentioned the importance of details that make the difference. Like, for example, another thing that struck, strikes me a few years ago. I, re I was told by some activists from Venezuela that uh, um, there was a time when um, Chavez had to face a, an attempt of coup d'etat, and uh, he, he, the, the most important way that it was carried out was by uh, getting hold of the uh, digital infrastructure of PDVSA, which is the oil company. And this uh, brought him to, to, to bring in uh, groups of heck, crackers young crackers, and eventually set up an entirely different system, open source. And that is just a little detail, you know, the, the digital infrastructure of your oil state company. And then, and, and then it could nearly overthrow his, uh, his, his regime. Uh, talking about this overthrowing activities, history teaches us that uh, Often, the uh, arduous, usually tragic, revolutionary commitment that originates in the name of the good for the people ends up in brutal dictatorships. We've seen this in Europe with fascism, Nazism, and communism. With due differences, we are witnessing things in, with the Arab Spring, where revolt not only didn't bring to the expected results, but oftentimes the tremendous consequences we're seeing. And the reason are many, but there is a, one important point 
that, the one, the, that those who made the revolt were not able then to rule, manage, and organize after the revolt. Uh, this is, um, is a specific issue that there are art collectives and thinkers and are trying to tackle. Uh, recently in Kiev, this uh, school of Kiev within the biennial of Kiev is actually taken the same issue. A couple of years ago in uh, Cali, Co Colombia, the collective Elena Producciones that also was awarded this award that we also uh, established a few years ago that is called Visible Award. Um, the Elena Producciones collective uh, organized festival of performances, but one of the main issues was their educational workshops to learn into to, to practicing organizational skills. And uh, if I'm quoting and talking of uh, learning and school, uh, it's because it's actually the basis of uh, my practice at Città dell'Arte. Eh? Uh, education, learning, but it, the fact is, is, in our daily life, which is actually what happens, as John Lennon used to put it, now what, what happens to you when you're busy making other plans? Life. Uh, we very seldom do we go or do we govern uh, as individuals. In the best cases, we delegate someone. And in often cases, they, the, the ones we delegate to govern us are the ones that make it more difficult to change. We don't govern at school, we don't govern at work, most times not in families either. And uh, how can you improvise to govern cities and complex systems? Learning how to govern things before or after a revolt needs a tremendous exercise practice, and of course, in its discipline. Um, the brain, we are more and more aware, is a, a plastic organ that by learning can even shape itself. I have a friend who is trying in vain to get me to do some sports, and he explained to me lots about these things, and is trying to put me into this situation. It's never going to happen. Nevertheless, it tells me that this uh, practice would uh, activate the ability of the nervous system to shape itself. But not only. The new shape would become a permanent acquisition that would not require any more to be consciously recruited into action because it would learn to self-ignite in the situations where that have caused it to, to grow, but also in others, for some other reasons, possibly even unknown, associated with it. Uh, going on with uh, weightlifting. Uh, one learns weightlifting, Nuccio tells me, by learning small bits of it, breaking down the sequence of such an explosive gesture Personally, I also find it pretty ridicule, anyway. Uh, this movement's very difficult, generally not natural at all, not spontaneous, each of which involves, firstly, to generate this nerve tissue, and thus a sequential activation in this famous gesture of lifting. And it needs a lot of exercise and a lot of discipline. Again, similarly to the issue of managing the logistics of containers, how much exercise is, this, is it needed to develop the ability to create visions and perspectives that reformulate our collective statute on more acceptable grounds, and even more, to implement these perspectives in the societal fabric, to manage, administer their maintenance, renew them, transform them by improving them step by step, Going back to the critique now, the weightlifter coach knows very well that it is no use for his trainee to scream at the handlebar 
for it's been heavy and probably pretty numb, certainly insensitive, basically a lousy bastard. Strangely, however, do we continue to pretend that it could be enough to shout at capitalism to make it move? What to do? Critique is not enough, but it's useful. Discipline alone, without autonomy and criticism, of course, in itself is a problem. We should combine them in novel configuration. As said, we have seen, and I'm sure that most of you are aware of actual practices that do affect realities. As a matter of fact, we are also trying to collect them in a repository online that is called Geographies of Ch or Transformation. It's an online resource where hundreds of, of practices are mapped, brought to the attention of whomever would find them of any interest. It is, of course, an enormous wealth of knowledge and practices that stand for the case of those saying that it is possible to affect realities www.geographyofchange.net. Even through art practice, although this repository is open to other than art, mostly to other walks of life like economy and finance, health, agricultural food, and so forth and so on. So learning and spreading knowledge is essential, and we need tools, places, to, to do that. And we ourselves have been working on this. Um, this is a symbol. Symbols are very strong, are always, have always been tools. This is Pistolet drawing this symbol a few years ago. Um, what is this symbol? I, I should tell you a few things about it. In the meantime, I'll try to, with my other hand to, to move through the pictures. Uh, the, the, the symbol, as you, as you see, is made up of three circles. It, it, it was originated by an elaboration of the infinity sign, which is an eight-line uh, horizontal. You know? Two circles touching one another into one little point. And we have always used in our history, we don't know where, this come, where the, sign, the symbol comes from, there are different theories, but we have used it, and it's been it's proven to be super strong and effective a symbol. I mean the infinity one, eh? the, the original two, two, two circles. But in the point where the two circles meet, as you, if, when you draw the line, there is just one point. That is such a small space. It's very difficult to be there, to inhabit that space. If we assume that the two circles opposite one to another represent opposition, positive and negative, good and bad, cold and warm, there is, a, there is the, a possibility of encounter, but it is again so little that it is very hard to get in there. Maybe with your imagination you can get there. Also because then geometry tells you that that point is, is uh, material. Spaceless is immaterial. Well, this, the new symbol makes the line connect again. It is, it is as though the little dot was um, elongated, hmm? elongated, and the circle, a new circle, was drawn around it. A third one. Well, that, in that middle circle, yes, there is much more space. What has he got to do all this symbolical thing with what we're talking about? Uh, it's already happened in the course of philosophy. Of, many of you will have thought of mm, wealth of things, uh, uh, obviously Hegel, but many other things possibly. And, uh, but today we're trying to assume this as a symbol, but for a pedagogical, uh, daily, um, activity, which is uh, as easily spotable uh, or tellable conjunction, conjunction, uh, the conjunction of the two, of two oppositions. So, when you find yourself, and you often find yourself, 
facing a phenomenon, whatever kind of phenomenon, take your time <laughs> to connect it to its opposition, or at least to something that it's different from. And then try and activate this possible tension. We see this happening in biology, in chemistry, in physics, uh, all the time. Water is exactly that, hydrogen and oxygen. And so many things in our daily experience are happening through this. And that thing in, that comes out as a, sometimes a chemical reaction is a creation. So that symbol represents a formula for creation. That is not to say creativity, it's creation. Okay. All right, so I will try to go back to the point. Um, we need tools, as I said before. This as well is a tool in order to bring in together many people who are already active in their communities, most of the times. Some other times they are not, they're just willing to. And uh, they sometimes uh, find it super interesting and helpful to have tools, inspirational, educational, and sometimes even pragmatical tools. So we came to, to realize that uh, we would uh, spread and try and activate this symbol so the symbol in itself is a symbol. It doesn't mean much else than what is symbology stands for. But what may matter also to what we're talking about is how do you translate it and enact it into daily reality in your own community, in your own context. Okay, can become part of your mental uh, way of looking at things, but it can also be a way to be active in your own community. Should I uh, finish? So, yeah, the final claim, uh, which is this one. We've seen this symbol, we brought it to many different places, sometimes very minute or remote locations, and some other times in, in very um, important places in the effect that can have on our lives, like the United Nations or political institutions. Nowadays, in a few days actually, in, uh, in Geneva, there will be the opening of, uh, of this symbol representation that will be there permanently. But at the same time, there is an exhibition of artist practices uh, help contributing to transforming the way we live in our urban fabric that will go along with Habitat 3 intergovernmental Workings. Habitat 3 is one of these uh, activities that the United Nations carry on to define standards uh, of how we're going to uh, live in, in the, try and live in the future. So it is a, a tool, it is a useful tool for us to reach all of these places. And if I, if I, if I end up with this in Cuba, in a few weeks, we will open um, a workshop uh, with our embassy in Cuba, or agent in Cuba, in La Habana. Uh, and that's going to go on for a year. Uh, and uh, we're going to work with uh, uh, universities, and of course, local universities and, and, polit and political administrators. Of course, Cuba is, again, very symbolically again, but is very practical and real at the same time. Thank you. much for three exciting presentations. Um, the first question I have for you is um, about the relation of the institution to the artistic project. In our introductory text for the session it says um, uh, that uh, there are new foundations for new